somewhat of a rarity, a street sign, the street sign for my hostel actually. This is the Isaac Kuka Mosque, a 19th century mosque. Um, it's right at the intersection, uh, my hostel up there on the right, and behind me is the river. View, not much space in there around the mosque. The backyard looks pleasant enough, and that may be where the uh, Iman lives. Some old uh, gravestones look like it would be for just one man, or This is the hostel. This is the Church of Holy Friday, a 14th century church. Does not appear to be in operation at this moment in time. Some interesting detail that we'll look at, there's six arches along this side on the bottom, but notice the difference between the far two. There are three like the far one, two up at this end, and three of the other, right almost in the middle. Again, focusing a little bit on design, we'll come down here and look a little bit at these windows, which has a couple of pieces of stone that do something different than normally seen. And looking at this deal, kind of a maze idea continuous maze, if you will, as a motif. And this motif of arch inside of arch inside of arch. And here a pretty solid looking clock tower, bell tower rather. Again with some original stone work motif and that double arched arch. What would be called a narthex right now but it's a mix of probably as Muslim and Byzantium style. But notice that these original frescoes have all been marked up, presumably with the idea of covering them with a, a new layer of plaster. That's unfortunate. Here it looks like it's being restored. Here it looks like they're working on the mosaics. This should be interesting. Here you can see that the plaster has been restored and that motif on the right, which looks like a brick motif. Could that have been a library or was that some kind of... Yeah, some kind of uh, calligraphy there. And also on this side here. But even from here, even I, can tell it's a fairly elegant looking picture of Jesus. Hopefully they're going to restore all of that. Semi tragic to think that they did what they did. Hopefully it's not new. It doesn't look that old though that banging up that notching, if you will, of those. And here it looks like the restorers have at least put on a base layer of uh, stucco cement. Same with that column, that's great. You can see they've done the same with those inner columns. Hopefully they'll ultimately do that with these columns, but these columns lack the frescoes that we saw a moment ago towards the front of the church. Standing back from some scaffolding that goes up quite a little way, so you can see that this is a major project. <clears throat> and I'm going to try and scoot in there and get a close look at Christ lying down in that casket to see if I can detect that the archaeologist might be filling in those hack marks, for lack of a better term. I just can't tell from here. If they're going to do it, it's dicey work because obviously you can't damage the very fresh, uh, no, fresco that you were working on. In other words, the surround, uh, area surrounding the hole is legitimate fresco. You can't damage that. Here we're looking at what hopefully will be the altar and will hopefully be restored someday. 
We can see frescoes on the inside. I wonder why they were so well protected here um, and not on the, that portion there. It may be that this area down here has been subjected to the vagaries of weather and human molestation, whereas up on top they simply couldn't get at it until some damn fool decided to eliminate uh, or go over the top of these frescoes uh, with new ones, with new plaster, and hopefully that's not what they're going to do. I see if you can see from this close-up, you can see that we're due another three-eighths of an inch of probably a very fine plaster that will take the uh, frescoes well. On my finger over these holes, I can see that they have patched them up a bit at least put on a lower level of patching fill. And from there, they will probably, with great painstaking care, fill in more fine plaster before they then have to repaint these frescoes matching what lies underneath. That would seem to me to be quite an expert job. Hopefully they've brought in experts to do it. This is good, this is, this is good. All of the implements used by the restorers to restore. For some reason we have at least two that have not been terribly hacked up a bit, the upper one. And this one here also, right where the face is. Hmm, I wonder if this could have been more than just a preparation for some new frescoes, but in fact some kind of molestation. intentional enough for a religious or political reason because this one's not damaged down below the face. You can appreciate that weathered uh, original deep blue or black paint. See this one not terribly hacked up. Certainly not like the one below. Is it possible that they stopped them before they got to that point? Okay, about having your work cut out for you for the next year or two, or ten. Like a test area that may have been cleaned. Yeah, see, I can't get enough light to get an image up there. Get thrown out once. Here we're up on the second floor, as you can see. And here we're looking at a fresco that appears. Here is an original hack mark, but here it looks like they've filled it in with something. So you can see it here, and maybe even test painted it right there. The column almost looks new. So they may have had to restore this arch a bit. This is pretty up here. I wonder what the function of this is. Kind of a narrow spot for a choir. Looking at this, you can see how horribly it's been hacked up. Damn, who was the moron that had that idea? Did such buildings not get destroyed, that be rebuilt, be restored? This fresco that has not been too badly damaged, except for this large spot down here which may be for another reason. People have left mementos. So for some, it still remains an important uh, religious center. Okay, I've climbed up on this scaffolding enough. It's shaking to see how they're progressing on this first major piece of restoration. It looks like they're trying to put a little bit of color into the indentation marks that they filled in. Here's some of the normal sand that they use probably for those um, pillars that we saw where they're returning the face to them to make them smooth where they lost all of them. But here we can see uh, more refined plasters and uh, a better sand right there and as well as those sands, much better grades that they're using for the finer detail work. The sign says at best, rehabilitating our common European heritage, I would say our world heritage. And the work's undertaken to be done. The 
roof, belfry. Hmm. A lot of that emblem around Kosovo, no surprise. A little bit of this one, but not the Yunmik in particular, and the similar one. See in the moment is the Jenny Mahala Mosque, 19th century mosque. And inside there is a lecture, sermon, whatever going on.